Tonight on Q2, a historic day as the U.S. Supreme Court overturns the 50-year-old landmark decision of Roe v. Wade, a decision that is now leading to protests and rallies all across America tonight. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Friday. I'm Russ Riesinger. It's a ruling that could affect the future of women's health for millions of Americans as the high court officially moves to eliminate the constitutional right to abortion. It's a sad day for the court and for the country. Now, with Roe gone, let's be very clear. The health and life of women in this nation are now at risk. President Joe Biden calling the decision extreme and the court's three more liberal justices agreed, writing they dissented with sorrow for, quote, the many millions of American women who have today lost a fundamental constitutional protection. Writing for the majority, Justice Samuel Alito said the Constitution does not confer a right to abortion. Chief Justice John Roberts joined the other five conservatives in upholding Mississippi's abortion ban, but wrote he would have stopped short of overruling Roe outright. The ruling, though not a surprise, has caused protests to erupt around the nation, including outside the Supreme Court. A rally has just begun on the courthouse lawn here in Billings. We'll have more on that tonight at 10 o'clock. Well, this decision expected to lead to abortion bans in roughly half the states, though at least right now not here in Montana. However, there are trigger laws that would eliminate abortions in all of Montana's neighboring states, including Wyoming. Abortion is protected here because of a 1999 decision by the Montana Supreme Court known as the Armstrong decision, which found the state constitutional right to privacy gave women the right to have an abortion prior to fetal viability. That means abortion's future in Montana is in the hands of the legislature and the Montana Supreme Court now. For more on how today's ruling will impact our state moving forward, here's MTN's Jonathan Amberian. In the hours after the U.S. Supreme Court released its decision, leaders made clear that the debate over abortion in Montana was shifting to within the state. For now, it's expected no immediate changes will occur, but the next word on whether that continues could be in the hands of the Montana Supreme Court. Abortion is health care, full stop. I would say further, abortion remains legal in Montana, and that's what we'll continue to tell our patients. Stephanie McDowell is the executive director of Bridger Care, a nonprofit based in Bozeman that provides reproductive health care, though it does not perform abortions. We've seen an increase in our patients accessing emergency contraception and IUDs. And with abortion bans in place, access to birth control will become even more essential. Uh, but the reality is that contraceptive care is already limited for too many people. Bridger Care has also taken over distributing federal family planning funding to clinics around Montana, including Planned Parenthood, which does offer abortions. With neighboring states implementing trigger bans on abortion that will take effect automatically, McDowell expects an influx of patients from outside the state, straining Montana abortion providers. For those opposed to abortion in Montana, the federal ruling was welcome, but it's not likely to bring immediate changes because of the Montana Supreme Court declaring a right to abortion under the state constitution in the 1999 Armstrong case. In a statement, Montana Family Foundation President Jeff Laslafi said, quote, Our work is just beginning, and he called for amending the state constitution or overturning the Armstrong decision. Attorney General Austin Knudsen and Republican leaders in the legislature have also called on the state Supreme Court to reverse Armstrong. The court at that time ruled that a woman's ability to pursue an abortion is a right to privacy, which honestly is not contained within the, the Montana Constitution. I asked House Majority Leader Sue Vinton if they've discussed calling a special session to propose more abortion restrictions. Well, we're certainly discussing all, all available options. Um, as we saw in the 2021 session, when we were able to pass and the governor signed a number of pro-life bills, uh, what happened after that is that uh, liberals then went straight to the courts and the courts have blocked that good pro-life legislation from taking effect. House Minority Leader Kim Abbott, a Democrat, doesn't believe the public wants a change in the way the right to privacy is interpreted. They support it in our state constitution. The Democratic caucus certainly supports it. Um, you know, any attempt to eliminate or roll back the right to privacy, I think, would be met with um, some strong resistance from Montana voters. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Montana Governor Greg Gianforte reacting today, saying 
Today marks a historic win for life, families, and science. With this monumental decision, the Supreme Court has restored power to the American people and their elected representatives. I'm in discussions with legislative leaders on next steps as we work to protect life in Montana. Montana U.S. Senator Steve Daines is the founder and chair of the Senate Pro-Life Caucus. He issued this statement, the United States Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs today ends a historic injustice and rightfully ends one of the world's most horrific abortion policies. The long overdue demise of judicially imposed abortion on demand gives bright new hope to unborn children and their moms across America. Montana's Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester, who's a strong supporter of Women's Health Protection Act, released this statement today. The Supreme Court's ruling now means women and doctors will be put in jail when exercising this long-held right in states across the country. No judge or politician should be telling women how to live their lives or undermining their fundamental right to privacy. Here in Billings, David Jay caught up with two local organizations as they make sense of the landmark decision and what it means for them. The decision that came out of the Supreme Court today wasn't particularly surprising. I think it's, you know, absolutely devastating for access to abortion in our country. For the foreseeable future, things will not change here in Montana, though I expect that we'll see, you know, continued assaults on the right to access uh, reproductive health care and abortion as we go forward. We are so excited. We have been praying for this and fasting for this for many years. There are some states that have already said that they are going to have abortion up to the moment of birth. And there are some states that have said that as soon as Roe v. Wade is struck down, they're going to make abortion illegal in their states. And most states are somewhere in between, which is where Montana is. Once again, the rally on the courthouse lawn began about a half hour ago. We'll have full coverage of that tonight at 10. Doppler radar is lighting up right across Yellowstone County in the Billings area right now. There's also quite a bit of uh, thunder and lightning along with this and up to some pea-sized hail reports. Also, some areas with a little bit heavier rain. You can notice this initial plume here through southern Montana. Now, earlier in the day, we were watching the heavier rain here from Miles City up into northeastern Montana. That initial wave is left. The next wave starts to move in. So if you see storms starting to approach, take safe cover. We're looking at the possibility of some strong to severe storms, especially once we start getting into uh, southeastern Montana, into the Dakotas, and especially into central North Dakota. Already a bunch of tornado and funnel clouds reported there. More weather coming up. Yellowstone National Park is now back open, but the community of Cook City making it clear at a meeting with park officials yesterday, they don't want to be left behind when it comes to cleanup efforts. Our Matthew Hidalgo has an update tonight. A flood like this doesn't happen in Yellowstone, at least not in our lifetime. For areas like Gardner and Cook City, hope is that the roads can be fixed to save Yellowstone season as well as the towns. The flooding was detrimental to many towns across south central Montana, redirecting rivers, taking out bridges, and leaving communities stranded. Both Montana and Wyoming have come together to get the north and northeast entrances of our beloved Yellowstone National Park back up and running. Yellowstone National Park Superintendent Cameron Shawley and others gathered for a meeting in Cook City to remind the community that Yellowstone has not forgotten them. That 50 million is for Cook City as well. Temporary fixes are on the way for both areas, but said the challenges are greater near Cook City where more changes have to be made. This corridor has got four different temporary fixes that have to be developed. Might be a Bay Bridge in one place, it might be a cut road around damage, like I said. Um, they're equally important. The federal highway teams were not able to get out to the damaged areas near Cook City till the water went down, but Shali assures those repairs will be made as soon as possible. Matthew Hidalgo, MTN News. On Friday, the FDA announced an immediate ban of the popular e-cigarette Juul. It made national headlines because it could potentially affect the entire vaping industry, but for local stores like Vintage Vapor, the ruling has little to no impact on their day-to-day. As stores around Billings remove Juul products from their shelves, it's still business as usual for many vape stores in the community. It doesn't really affect us too much just because we don't sell Juul. Again, they're, they're sold by Big Tobacco and we just don't deal with Big Tobacco products here. Um, I'm sure a lot of other businesses that were really heavy in the Juul product, I'm sure it's affecting them just a little bit, but as far as us, it doesn't affect us. 
Juul is the biggest name in the industry, and now that they've fallen, what does this do to the market? I think it's going to shift more towards the disposable market um, or people getting into bigger devices and stuff like that. Um, again, Juul was just a small portion of that market, but they were one of the most well-known um, because of the advertising that they had done. They were targeted because it's viewed as one of the largest contributors to the growing issue of kids under the age of 18 becoming addicted to vaping because of the flavor choices. Vintage Vapor says they do their due diligence to ensure they aren't contributing to the issue. We're not catering to, to the kids. It's never been about that. You know, people like their flavors. That's what they want to continue with, you know. Um, it's unfortunate that the kids are getting their hands on them, you know, and we do our best here to prevent that 100%. As the ethics of the industry come into focus, Oshner has this to say. If people do their proper research and look at the, the right reports and stuff and not what everybody's telling you and actually do your research, you'll notice that, you know, your, your mind will be changed. In Billings, Phil Van Pelt, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, music to the ears. A Magic City summer favorite is back. We'll get you ready for Sunday's Symphony in the Park next. And in sports, we'll hit the course, but Scott won't be talking about golf. We'll find out what he is discussing coming up in just a bit. The MTN 530 News continues right after this.